Hi, I'm Austin Janowski, and you're watching You Promise Me Comics. I'm here with a creator of Stanley the Snowman from Scout Comics, yep. Austin Janowski. Hello. Uh, Austin's a guest here at Fan Expo New Orleans, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about his comic uh, career and uh, what things he's got going on right now. Sounds good. Let's do it. Uh, so, tell uh, tell the viewers a little bit about uh, how you got into comics, collecting comics, reading comics, and then how you got into creating comics. I started collecting comic books when I was 14, X-Men 205. That was the first one that got me hooked. Um, I was visiting my cousins, it was raining, we were in Florida, not a whole lot to do when it's not sunshine, and after reading about 9 or 10 X-Men comics, I'm like, this is amazing, I need to read more, and like, let's go to the comic book store. I'm like, well, there's a store? Oh my god. It was just like an epiphany. So, collected when I was 14, I got into comic books when I was 24, I went to go see Bart Sears, I wanted a Power Girl sketch, because, you know, Power Girl. And he gave me a headshot, and I gave him crap on that. And he asked if I was an artist, and I was slack jawed, and that's kind of how it, you know, it started. He was very nice, and Graham Nolan gave me some feedback. Tom Lyle gave me feedback. Tom Vincent, and down the road, and just that's kind of did. I've been doing it for about 28 years now. Okay. Yeah, I've been lucky to do a little bit for Marvel and Image and IDW and a bunch of other in Inker. About five, six years ago, I started writing, and uh, one of the books I have is Sam and the Snowman through Scout. Yeah, and then uh, most recent one that just uh, will be, I guess, shipping right now uh, yeah. is the Zombies Are Human 2 for, uh, through Kickstarter. Yes, yeah, so uh, Ten Sky, that's my imprint, and so yeah. we do Zombies Were Human 2, tells zombie stories before and how they become zombies. So we've been doing Kickstarters for that. We did a couple graphic novels, we've got a couple comic books. The last one, uh, Jonathan Hendrick and Joe Davison exclusive. Uh, Joe Davidson was on Stranger Things. Jonathan Hendrick is on the hot comic book, The Recount, through Scout Comics. And yeah, it should be in people's hands. Uh, when I get back on Tuesday, I'll start shipping them out. Awesome. So what, what uh, I guess, what influences do you draw in your art? And then uh, now that you're doing more writing, what influences do you pull for, for that? So for art, I was mostly an anchor more than anything. Like, you know, Mark Farmer, Cam Nearly, um, Terry Austin, those are really the anchors I try to emulate. Because uh, back then they were very, very big in the industry. Um, Art Adams was really good. Paul Pelletier was good. Jim Lee. Art Adams, another, another guest here. At yeah, the another guest here. Um, I gush up. I like message them and I'm like, I'm going to stalk you. Um, <laughs> But for writing, uh, Terry Moore is really the okay. writer I tried to... His uh, Strange Than Paradise stuff was just absolutely fantastic. And really kind of gave me the confidence to try to do some more writing and kind of go from there. So. Okay. Awesome. Uh, what other projects are you working on right now uh, outside of the, uh, the imprint that you got going with the, the zombie stories? So Divine Retribution was going through a uh, uh, second site. Yes. And uh, we did first printing, sold out, second printing, and then the company did a switch to just basically horror. So it's a little bit of a limbo, but Source Point really likes it, so they are going to probably pick it up and we'll be publishing it uh, sometime later on this year. We'll start. Okay, awesome. Uh, for when you're writing, what, what things, not influences, but what things inspire you to create or get like your mind thinking in, in the creative process? Oh, movies. Movies? Yeah, by far, movies. I like watching all different kinds, not just the, the superheroes, but also the horror and the sci-fi and everything like that. Uh, nope. The new one, yeah. from, uh, which just came out, I thought that was absolutely fantastic. Such a good movie. Oh, such a, such a good movie. Documentaries are really interesting. Selling the narrative story, looking at the actual person itself and their background helps create characters. Um, dramas are really good too because it teaches you conflict and, and resolution. So that helps incorporate into the type of storytelling I'm trying to do. Even though they're different genres, you have to have drama and conflict. That's what drives the story, makes it interesting for people to keep reading. Yeah, any music that you like to listen to as you're writing that kind of helps keep the creative juices flowing? Well, I'm an 80s guy, so okay. alternative music is, you know, The Cure, the, you know, um, 
Depeche Mode, uh, New Order, uh, Joy Division. Depending on the type of mood I want to kind of do, is the type of music yeah. in that genre I do. But I, I listen to anything. So now, now with like your writing, are you feeling like you want to stick with staying on the indie side of things, or would you want to take a step back towards like Marvel at some point? Take a t- uh, tackle at you know any of the creator creations over there. Oh, I would love the opportunity to to write for them, do yeah. something a little bit different, jump into the multiverse, and do something kind of. Like um, Sean Murphy, I don't know if I'm saying it right. He does the offshoot of the Batman's, like White Knights. Oh yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah, that's the kind of thing I would like to so write like too. Alternate version. Yeah, of what's yeah, going miniseries, on. that sort of thing. Um, okay. Something a little bit of a different take on characters themselves. I would like to focus on the villains more than the superheroes. Okay, kind of like know. some of the Joker stuff that DC's got going exactly. on. Exactly. Yeah, you know, because Marvel has some really neat villains also that don't really get a lot of focus on besides Magneto or, or Kane or, or whatever. Yeah, or Doom. Yeah, those three. Those are the villains like, that like, like. That's basically it. There's a lot yeah. of other villains that are very interesting that were really used in the 70s that aren't exactly being focused on now and I think that would be really cool to kind of shine a light on those. So with, with that, like, do you use that kind of thought process in creating your own characters as saying, hey, we always focus on the, the heroes. Can I pull in a villain to my story and make them like this interesting character that gets the spotlight. Well, yeah, you want to have an interesting villain. You have you have to have some emotional response to said character. Whether you like him or hate him, there's something uh, intrinsically you want to cheer for them because everyone wants redemption, even if they're a horrible villain. Like with The Walking Dead and Negan, he yeah. ended up being an anti-hero and people actually liked. So when I'm coming up with an, an, an you know, antagonist, I want to have one redeeming quality about him that anyone can relate to, just that little glimmer. So even though they're doing horrible things, you can see maybe there's a possibility that there's some, there's some good in him. <laughs> you know, like Luke Skywalker, yeah. like, there's some good in you, I feel it. Yeah, you want to you have that, almost that hope that they're going right. to maybe turn, turn yeah. around and be... Not who they seem to be displaying themselves as. Right. And if they do, you have, like, oh, that's good. If they don't, you're like, oh, you should be more crushed. But either way, you've accomplished as a writer what you want to accomplish. Right. Um, going forward with uh, future projects, is there any... You probably can't say which, which kind of things you're working on. I know that's always a secret process, but is there any specific genre that you're looking forward to working with uh, coming forward? So the, the first book I ever put out was called Seventh Millennium. That was through Ally Comics about 28 years ago. Uh, what I'd like to do is revamp it, redo it. It's a fantasy set into the future. It was based on my D&D character, so it's very fantasy, <laughs> dwarves, elves, and the whole nine. I think yeah. it'd be really cool nowadays to go back to that, do a different art style, re-up okay. on the type of story so it's not quite so dated. Yeah. That's my next thing I'd really like to get done. Awesome. Well, thank you for, for talking with me. I'll let you get back to your booth and uh, sell some comics today. <laughs> Sounds great. Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate um, you uh, talking to me. And then any, anything you want to plug or shout out? Well, Stanley the Snowman trade is in bookstores, available in the Scout store now. You can get the complete Stanley story. Um, I'm also a director, so I have a 30 for 30 cell documentary that people can uh, start seeing the trailer on YouTube and everything. We're doing a okay. festival circuit. I don't okay. know if that's okay to say on here. Sure. And then, um, yeah, Divine's the big thing we're going to try to get out and get finished this year. And then Zombies Volume 3 and Volume 4 will have done by December of 2023. Awesome. Where can people find you to follow your work? Uh, Facebook. Austin Janowski or the art of Austin Janowski or Instagram. I don't do Twitter okay. anymore, but those are you can find. Okay. And uh, thanks again for, for chatting with me. Yes, sir. Thank you.